Come, we give all praises to you. How about Shimei was shy? Shalaki. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and shalom to the elect. It's pushing up this word throughout the four corners of the globe by Hashem Rokakodash and the Holy Spirit. We do these lessons for the edification of the house of Dawadah, the house of David, for the building of the elect in these last days um, before the return of the Messiah, who the world ignorantly called Jesus. His his name in the ancient Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, and his only begotten father, the heavenly father, the creator, Yahweh, is his name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew tongue that we call the Lashawan Kodash, the holy tongue, the pure tongue. We do these lessons to show our people the way to salvation, what is happening to them currently, what's going to happen to them in the future, and what has done and what uh, uh, transpired in the past to lead us to this point, to make these videos, to show our people why are we doing these things. We're doing these things because we have a psychopathic lack of empathy, uh, uh, a serial killer on our heels. He's coming. He's gunning for us. He's coming for us. And there's is a time in the Bible is called Jacob's trouble. And he's coming uh, with all his uh, uh, wrath. He's coming with all his stops. But the Lord said he's going to bring up a standard against him. And that standard is the mouth of the holy prophets through the power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. This is what we know. This is what we proclaim. So, again, mentioning this psychopathic, homicidal maniac, a people, right, who controls the earth. You look at the people who control the earth. He's a psychopathic, genocidal maniac. And we're going to get into these descriptions and we're going to talk about uh, the world's master, who the, is the so-called white man. His name is Esau in the Bible. They come from the, the, the seed of Esau and we call them Edomites. This is who they are, regardless of what they feel about it. Uh, you could take all the DNA goddamn tests you want. You could try to prove anything uh, 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 you want to, de to uh, debunk what we say, but the evidence is stacked up against you. We know who you are, your, skir your skirt's been lifted, you're showing all your business, and we have to proclaim it. This is all it is. So getting back on the psychopath, when you look up the dictionary and look up the definition um, on online about psychopath, a psychopath is a person who lacks empathy. Empathy Right, E M P A T H Y is the ability to sense and be concerned with the feelings of other people, how other people react to your deeds. He or she also lacks conscience, the ability to know right from wrong, and to control one's actions appropriately. We know the so called white man can't do this, he can't control himself. You have a guy in the, in, in the so-called White House, and he says he lies or or embellish the truth for fun, and people say, "Oh, he's just making you know he's it's a tall tale." Like when you say, uh, 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 "I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse." He's just embellishing. No, this is what you call a liar. This is what you call a, a person who lacks empathy, a psychopath. Because he does, he can't control what he says out says out his mouth. He can't control his actions, his mouth. He lacks remorse. He don't care. Tell people to go to the, go to the grocery store and ask someone uh, to give you food on credit. What, what store is that? We're not living in goddamn Flintstone age. We're not living in a little house on a prairie age. What, the, what, what goddamn grocery? You can't go to Walmart and say, I, want, I, I need a, a couple of groceries on credit. I'll pay you back when I get paid, when the government paid me back. This ain't the little house on the prairie, Mary Ingalls. Nigga, what are, you, what are you talking about? You a psychopath. It says he lacks remorse and the, the capacity to regret or be sorry for the things that he has done to others. Psychopaths are masters of deceit and manipulation, exploiting and using other people for their own satisfaction. Psychopaths are consumed with the desire for power over other people. Yet with all this, 
psychopaths typically are able to mask these defects by an outward pleasant and apparent friendly personality. Scripture said, never trust thy enemy. When he say peace and safety, the sudden destruction cometh. It says in part that this is why they are so dangerous because they smile in your face and all the time want to take your place. You know, the, you, you know it. Homicidal maniacs. Homicidal maniacs are people with a compulsion to kill other people. He does this for his desire. He went down to Mexico. He went down to uh, South America. He went down to the to the to the uh, islands in in the West Indies, so-called West Indies, and massacred, murdered hundreds and hundreds of people. He's still doing it to this day. You call him Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Freddie Gray. This is who they. These, this this is the hands. This is the uh, deaths by the hands of a homicidal maniac. And they have no guilt or regret about taking lives. It is just something they do to achieve satisfaction. You see Ted Bundy. You know about Jeffrey Dahmer. You know about this guy who, who he killed his uh, Louisiana, he killed uh, five of his family, killed his girlfriend, her mother, and all this craziness. You see the maniacs. You see the homicidal maniacs. It says many such people feel a great surge of power or of sexual satisfaction upon killing. Because if you don't kill somebody, you, you de you're still destroying them spiritually. Like the priest down in Texas, 286 priests. Basically murdering little boys under the age of eight years old. If you didn't kill them uh, with the sword, you killed them spiritually. These are ruined lives, man. These are rude. This is one church. One Catholic church. This is a homicidal maniac. He 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 thrives on on thrills to get either him, himself off of power or some type of deviant satis, sexual satisfaction. It says the condition is so far as I know incurable. Homicidal maniacs are in, there's no cure for them. So they put Ted Bundy up. They put uh, they put um, uh, Marilyn Manson. They put these guys up in prison for and, and 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 tax dollars being spent on them for years, right? For years, but within within three years, uh, John Muhammad, the DC sniper, got uh, got the got the injection within three years. The, the disparity, uh, uh, the, the, the differences, can't say the word disparity, the disparity uh, sentences and, 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 and the reason to, to be uh, put in a lethal injection or the gas chamber is different between whites and blacks. They let, they let Marilyn Manson stay on the goddamn in jail for 30, 40, 50 years. But John Muhammad gets the uh, injection within three. They said he was a homicidal maniac. Well, we could we find out what the hell happened? Why was he doing this? Could he write a book and then and explain what the hell he was doing? Ted Bundy got a series on on Netflix. You see how the the homicide the homicidal maniac and a psychopath are friends. They're friends. They buddies. One goes around killing and one's uh, protect his buddies. Give them uh, pardons. What the hell is that? You see, so you got you got two crazy ass people in charge of the whole system. It says such people, when apprehended, are usually locked away for life in a hospital for criminally insane. But there's no cure. What the hell? What's the point? Serial killer. Serial killer is typically a person who murders two or more persons, two, three or more persons usually in service of ad, ad, abnormal psychological gratification. He does this thing. You've seen, uh, uh, you know, it may be uh, fictitious or whatever, Silence of the Lambs. This guy, Jamie Gump. He, had, he was satisfied. He was, he was getting the satisfaction, uh, uh, satisfaction from cutting up uh, people's skin and, and, and sewing them together. This is what the movie portrayed, but this is what's out there. This is what's out there, a serial killers.
You see these guys. You killed three or more people, two or more people uh, in a church in Bible study saying you want to learn the Bible and you kill eight persons. That's a serial killer. Because you did it for your own satisfaction. And usually within a short period of time, these, these serial killers uh, uh, done, uh, uh, you know, do their crimes. Usually in the short periods of time. So they have to get it off real quick, you know what I'm saying? To get that gratification. These people are sick individuals and they root and they running the world. They 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 the ones who uh, uh orchestrate the, the the wars, the the world wars, dropping bombs on people, dropping drones on people, chemical uh, chemical weapons, pestilences. Uh uh um F foods that's not food called GMO foods. These people are psychopathic, homicidal, serial killer maniacs, man. This is what they are. They also, uh, um, when you look at them, when you study these people, right, there's a, there's a test called the mirror test. You give this to an animal. A mirror test, some, sometimes called the mark test, um, or rough test is a behavioral technique developed in 1970 by a psycholo uh, psychologist Gordon Gallup as an attempt to determine whether a, an animal possesses the ability of visual self-recognition. The test is a traditional method for attempting to measure self-awareness. However, there has, there has been agreement that animals can be self-aware in ways not measured by the merit test such as distinguishing between their own and others' song and senses. You know, they scent, they smells. In other, on the other hand, animals that can pass the MSR test do not necessarily have self-awareness. And this is this goddamn, uh, goddamn Edomite. You put up the mirror, which is the words from the Bible, just the, the prophecies of what's going on and who he is. He can't recognize himself. Oh, that's not me. Oh, that wasn't me. I didn't do that. Your forefathers did it. And you and you possessed the lands that he took. And you saying, no, it wasn't me. So saying all that, say, let's get to the scripture. This is a psychopathic killer, man. This, this, this dude is crazy. Are we dealing with this? this? This guy gets to be put out the way. He's wreaking havoc. Let's get this. Genesis. This is where it started. Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. It said, the Lord, Yahweh, said to, unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? You getting smart with the Lord. You talking back, you lying. How do I know? Who? Never heard of him. And he said, what has thou done? The voice of thy brother Blood crieth unto me from the ground. What does that mean? He already knew what happened. His blood is his death, his murder, and 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 the righteousness cry out to for 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 uh, uh, revenge, for for uh, justice to be done. This is what it means to be crying out. Something needs to be done to this person who who shed my blood. The the land cannot be cleansed, right? It says. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tellest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be on the earth. And this is what he is. He's always escaping, not recognizing what he has done throughout the earth. Be going from place to place, city to city, country to country, continent to continent, and not uh, uh, not uh, recognizing what he had done, the 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 wake of 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 death that he left behind. And Cain said unto the unto the Lord Yahweh, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Wait a minute, you wreaked habit, you killed your brother, and you and, and now your punishment you can't handle, you can't take it. All of a sudden now you 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 timid and 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 and, and you shook. Well, this is what these Edomites is, is saying uh, today. 
your Glenn Becks, you your 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 uh uh your CNNs and your and your ABCs and your and your uh, uh, all these cable networks talking about the Israelites. This is what they are shook and they saying, oh, oh, it's the punishment is greater than to compare. I'm not really an incest baby. No, I'm not really messed up. There you are. And your punishment needs to come upon you. You need to face your judgment. Nobody wants to go to court. No one wants to stand in front of the judge. But guess what? You do the crime. What? You got to do the time. Something happened, something must be done. This is what you this is how you proclaim righteousness on the earth by executing judgment swiftly, not letting this linger on. This is see, see everyone uh, Esau need to be judged like John Muhammad, the D.C. sniper quickly and speedily. Rush through the courts. The, the evidence is already laid out. The case has been uh, 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 the case has been closed. Now you have to face your your judgment. It says, "Behold, this is this is how he uh, not accepts uh, the mirror test." He said, "Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me." Well, you need to face your judgment. Esau and your Edomites, so-called white man, this is who you are. You need to face your judgment. You need to uh, uh, face the mirror and see if you recognize yourself. Show the world that you do recognize your crimes, that what you have committed throughout the earth. Everyone sees it but you. Maybe you'll never see it. This is why you're a psychopathic, homicidal, serial killer maniac. Because you can't recognize, you you have no empathy, you have no feelings or, 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 or understanding of what people are going through by your wake, by your destruction, by your typical ways, your colonialism. Do you need to you need to face the mirror and take a look? Because you're an evil maniac bastard, man, that need to be taken out the way. Psalms fifty eight. Psalms 58, 1, it says, Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O sons of men? This is the question the Lord is asking through David. Yea, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. You do this. You, the wicked. You, whomever you are. Violence is in your hands. Your hands is bloody and you caught. You caught red-handed. This is what it means, blood. You caught with the blood in your hands. But what the wicked say? The wicked are estranged from the wound as soon as they, uh, soon as they be born, speaking lies. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I wasn't there. I have an alibi. I never seen that person in my life. Well, you damn liar. You've been found You've been found out. We know who you are. We now know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Rawashai who you are, Esau. You are the so-called white man, self-proclaimed white man on the earth, the Caucasian. Esau's uh, uh, Esau of the of the Bible, Jacob's brother, and the, and the so-called blacks, uh, uh, Chicano, and Native Americans are the Israelites, are the Hebrew Israelites. This is who we are. And you're the wicked brother who, who was destined to slay us and trying to slay us and been slaying us and tomorrow want to slay us. Isaiah 47 and verse 8. It says, therefore hear this now. Or hear now this, thou that art given the pleasures that dwelleth carelessly, that saith in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. This is what the so-called white man has said. 
And no one's going to take us down. The few, the proud, the Marines. We have the greatest army in the world. No one can ever take us down. Let's build and make America great again. It says, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day, 24 hours. The loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection from the multitude of thy sorcery. It's coming to you perfectly the way it's supposed to be, the way it was uh, recipied, the way it was ordered. It's coming perfect. It's not going to be disturbed. It's coming to you straight. No chasing. It's coming to you straight. You're going to feel the wrath of the, of the power of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Shem Shai. And for thy abundance of thy enchantments, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. You trust in your wickedness because uh, 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 the execution wasn't speedily. You thought the, 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 the hearts, thought your hearts, your minds was fully set to do evil, man. You thought, you, you know, since, since I'm not being punished, I could go on for 500 years. I could do it for a thousand years. Nobody see me. I could run to the caves, come back stronger. You think nobody saw you. Well, the Lord saw you. The writing is on the wall. It says, for thou had trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am and no one's else beside me. That's a proud statement. There's no one else beside me. Nobody going to take me down. Who going to take me down? We are resilient. This is what you say to yourself. Isaiah 29 and 15. It says, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark because this is how you work. You walk, you, you, you work behind the shadows. We're talking about you elites. We're not talking about the, uh, the Glenn Becks. We're not talking about the CNNs. Those are all orchestrated uh, um, uh, tools that you use, so-called elite. We, we, know who, we know who you are. You behind the scenes. You're the, you're the man behind the curtain pulling all the strings. We talking to you. When we, t when we speak these videos, we speaking directly to you. We're not talking about Glenn Beck and these little peons, and these, these little Fox News commentators. They're, they're, they're nothing. They're fodder. They're fodder. That, 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 sh that, that helps strike the match. But we, we speaking to the core. We talk about the, 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 the actual the match. We're not talking about the, the, the father that, uh, the, the, what do you call that, the kindle wood. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the, the big chunks, the ones that's really pulling the strings. It says, and they say, who seeth them and knoweth us? Well, we, we know who you are now. We, see, we know who you are. You Rothschilds, you Gettys, you Bilderbergs, you Vanderbilts, you, uh, uh, all, all you uh, elitists out there. We know who you are. It don't matter. It don't matter. We coming for you. We, I'm talking about the Lord. Yahweh Bashim Shai is coming for you. Don't think I'm coming for you. I ain't got nothing to come with uh, other than these words. But the Lord is coming with wrath, man. You can't turn it back. You can't turn it back. Remember what has done been done in history. How you destroyed and, and put your hand uh, to, to his chosen people. You lost. You already lost and the, the, the war ain't begin yet. You didn't read the end of the story. The story said you lose. You're going to be put in a bonfire and destroyed forever. No more, no more Edomites. No more so-called white people on the earth. This is what the Bible proclaims. It's not my words. It's what has been written. It says, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a pot as clay because you think it's in your hand to make what this life has become. This is your works. This is your doings. The clay was been formed by you. All this wickedness is, is, is yours. You, so like you made this happen. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the things uh, framed say of him that framed it, 
he have no understanding? Oh, I didn't choose this. I didn't want to be this way, but this is the way you were made. And the things that you've done were made by you. So all this wickedness, all this unrighteousness, throughout the, all this death that follow and precede you in your wake, all that's been done by you. It's not hit anymore. You psychopathic maniac, homicidal maniac, serial killer. This is who you are. Michael 2 and 1 says, Woe unto them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. They practice these things. They practice their wickedness, see how much they could get away with. Let's get it. Micah 2. When it says practice, in the first verse, it says they practice it. And when you look up this word practice, When you look up practice, a shah to do fashion, they practice, they fashion it, they make it, they accomplish it, right? They produce it, they celebrate, look at this, to observe and celebrate, right? And I was reading down here, practice, perform, and uh, oh, I can't I can't find it right now, but it said it said um, they uh, 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 they uh, do it often, so often, right? They do it over and over again in order to improve and maintain the proficiency at it. And and when you look at proficiency. Proficiency means to make progress and have success and profit. This is why this is why it says they 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 it's satisfying to them. They they do these things over and over again to satisfy this urge that they have, this need for bloodshed. The the true vampires, man, they love the blood, man. They love blood. Numbers, let's finish with this one. Numbers 35, verse 33. It says, So you should not pollute the land wherein you are, for blood it defiled the land. And, and, and every land, every continent you've been on, you've shed blood. Every continent you've been on, you've shed blood. And it says, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that shed in, but by the blood of him that shed it. So this is your pay. This is your reward. This is your judgment that your blood must be shed, man, in order to cleanse the land. This is a true judgment from the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Rashad, to you, Esau, you psychopathic, uh, 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 homicidal, serial killer maniac. And with that, I say, call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and shalom to the elect that's pushing out this word throughout the four corners of the globe for the edification and the building of the, of the house of Dawadah, the house of David. For the elect, for the elect's sake, we say shalom. Peace until next time. Shalom.